what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name back at it once more with another Giants video. And today I'm going to be breaking down for y'all the keys to success of how we could get this win against the Buffalo Bills in our home opening preview this Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Preview for the game and also a little bit of how we can win. This time around, though, I'm not going to get so bold and say, hey, yo, the Giants are straight up going to win 32-28 to 28 or something like that. Like, nah, I'm not going to do that. I think I'm just asking for trouble at that point. I don't think I'm really going to do any score predictions. It's just, you know, a little, a little asinine to do so. And before I get right into this preview, uh, I've said it in a couple of videos already. Uh, most of you already know that uh, since I'm back in college, I really don't have time to do as many videos that I would like to do. Like right now, I would absolutely love to do some type of breakdown video of Eli's game uh, against the Cowboys. A little bit of a rebuttal to other Giants fans and uh, NFL fans in general who have the opinion that Eli was the reason we lost that game. Fans that think now is the right time to start Daniel Jones. And while I do think the right time to start Daniel Jones will be in this season, it definitely is not in the home opener. I think everybody's overreacting a little bit. You know what I mean? Eli had a good game, and I guess I kind of lost my title as one of the non-Eli apologists because of how much I've been defending him over the past couple weeks. But if you could go back to some of my earliest videos, I had the opinion, and in fact, I still do hold the opinion that the Giants should have never brought Eli Manning back. Um, he's not worth that $23 million. I always thought that if we're going to draft a quarterback, if we're going to fix the future quarterback situation, it made no sense to bring Eli back. But since they did bring him back, I, uh, I had to support him because he's still wearing Big Blue's uniform. He's still playing for my team, and I will always support players that play for my team. It's just, uh, just how I am. But it's also I'm also a realist, and Eli had a good game on Sunday. He's not the reason we lost. He wasn't going to be the reason we won anyway. Uh, unfortunately, he's more of a game manager these days, but that's okay. Teams can be successful with that. And um, while I still think we're going to see Daniel Jones later in the season, it doesn't make any sense to overreact and put him in now. It's been one game, one week. I think everybody needs to calm down a bit. I think there's uh, there's still good chances for the season. Obviously, if we go 0-2, that's a different situation. But um, I think everybody just needs to calm down a bit. And uh, if I really had the time to do more than one video today i would make a whole separate video on that but as you all know i ain't got the time so let's get into this buffalo bills preview so the giants are coming off uh, quite an embarrassing loss against the cowboys a 35 to 17 loss in which the defense looked like swiss cheese and basically gave all kinds of looks to dak prescott made dak look like a mixture of um, Patrick Mahomes, Amor Rogers, and, and Tom Brady all in one. And Dak, court, Dak, I said Dak quarterback. <laughs> Dak Prescott is a good quarterback, but he's not nearly as good as he looked against the Giants. How do they fix this going in to a game against the Buffalo Bills who have a young mobile quarterback, very similar to Dak. Dak is mobile, a lot of people forget that. Josh Allen is really mobile. He just uses that skill set more because he does not have the best offensive line. Uh, but he has a really big arm. What is bad about him is that he's inaccurate and he's very young. He's, there's going to be a lot of mental mistakes that he makes. Now, the Bills as a whole, I think the Bills are an extremely underrated team. Like, if I were to do sleeper picks, the Bills would be one of my sleeper picks out of the AFC. Maybe to get some type of wild card spot. Because their defense last year was top five, and it, it only improved over the offseason. Now, it's nothing compared to the, to the Dallas Cowboys defense. The Dallas Cowboys defense definitely has a way better linebacking core. And uh, their defensive line is a little better. The uh, Bills defensive line is really good. I wouldn't say it's on the same level as the Cowboys. Maybe just like, you know, on an echelon below it, right below it. And uh, I already said the Cowboys secondary is better, but that Bills defense is nothing to sleep on. Uh, given how this offense and this offensive line performed against the Dallas Cowboys defense, uh, one of the best in the league, I believe they should have absolutely no problems against this Bills defense. What I got to worry about on the offensive side, and this is going to be one of my keys to success, is the play calling by Pat Shermer. 
what was one of the reasons, one of the detriments in the Cowboys games last week. And um, in order for us to win, it's going to have to be the complete opposite. I want to see Saquon get the ball at least 20 times in this game because this is a Bills defense he could absolutely trample on. I mean, think about it. It's simple logic. If this guy was averaging 11 yards per carry against the Cowboys defense, one of the best in the league, one of the best linebacking cores, one of the best defensive lines, what do you think he's going to do against the Bills defense who, while they're still good, are nothing compared to the Cowboys defense? You know what I mean? And thinking about it is getting me a little bit angry about last week and whatnot, but it's time to move on. But I want Saquon to have at least 20 carries, ground and pound, control the clock a little bit, give Saquon the ball, and that would actually make play action more um, more effective. When we were running play action last week in the second half, it wasn't at all effective because we didn't run the ball nearly enough to trick the Cowboys defense into thinking we were actually handing it off. So, you know, you need to actually run the ball if you want to run some of these plays. And I want to see a bit more diversity in the play calling by Pat Sherman because last week a stat that came out which... I did notice during the game, but it only made me um, a bit more angry at Shermer was that 76% of our calls were played in an 11-man set, 11-man, three wide receiver personnel set, which is uh, very similar to what happened in 2017 when Ben McAdoo ran 95% of his plays in that set. When you r are running the same set all the time, you're basically running a very small um, amount of plays, the defense knows what you can do, you become, ex you become extremely predictable and extremely simple and nobody wins games that way. Shermer, you have to be a bit more diverse in your play calling. Alright, so that's, that's the key, well those are two keys right there I guess, run Saquon and I don't want to see you running 76% of the same plays or something like that, like come on, that's just stupid. Now then another key. And how we get onto this Bills defense uh, is going to be extremely difficult. But uh, we need to get pressure on Josh Allen somehow. Because the Bills offensive line is its not good. It's not bad. I want to say they're, they're average. I mean, maybe even below average because they, they didn't look good at all last week against the Jets. Uh, Josh was running for his life on more than a couple of times against that Jets defensive line. And the Giants do not have um, any players of that caliber yet. We have a lot of players with potential, a lot of players that maybe in a year or two will be uh, some of the best in the NFL, but they're not there yet. They're still young. I mean, we got seven new starters. Most of our players are still on their rookie contracts, if not their first years in the NFL. So what I'm going to do is, if we're going to get pressure on the quarterback, it needs to come from the inside. It's the same thing I said in uh, the Cowboys preview video. B.J. Hill and Dexter Lawrence should be the primary guys getting a push on the pocket because I believe they're best suited on our defensive line to get a push on the pocket. Dexter Lawrence was double teamed a couple times last week. A lot of people didn't know that. And B.J. Hill, rookie sack record holder for um, the New York Giants. So he has shown that he could be uh, as much as a pass rusher or, you know, as good as a pass rusher as he is a run stuffer. In my personal opinion, the only true run stuffer on that D-line is Dalvin Thompson. That's just me, because when I look at the, um, you know Hill's tape and Dexter's tape and the way that defenses play against Dexter by double team, like they, this isn't the first defense that double teamed Dexter Lawrence, the Cowboys. A lot of teams took notice of him in the preseason. It sends a message to me that say they know these guys, uh, his uh, pressure potential that he could get on the line, and if they could get just just a small push on the inside. The Bills' offensive line is that good. Just getting a small push on that inside, you're going to allow your outside guys to come in and collapse on the pocket, maybe get a sack on uh, Josh, or Josh Allen, or, you know, maybe get some type of tip pass, basically rushing the passer, you know? So, you know, get some inside pressure. And I'm not going to ask anything of our secondary because it's extremely young and they have a lot of things to fix, even with our linebacking core. Uh, just our, our entire defense as a whole, there's going to be growing pains. I'm not expecting them to turn anything over, you know, just, you know, in a week's span. And I said this, and I'll say it before, the defense, how they perform week one, is going to be different from how they perform week 17 because they will have improved and they will go through a bunch of growing pains. It will basically be a better defense by the end of the year than they were at the start of the year. So I'm not really going to ask too much of our secondary, just... Just pay attention to who your guy is. Try to stick to him. I mean, another stat that I saw was the Cowboys, Cowboys receivers last week had an average of 2.5 yards of free space, basically meaning that the nearest Giants defender was 2.5 yards away from them when catching the ball. That's 
that's stupidly easy for any offense to go up against a defense like that. And that's extremely bad. I mean, are there even adjectives to describe what I want to say, how bad that is for a defense? And I, that's not sustainable. I don't think in, there's any way that's the true like performance of that defense last week. Like, I, I think maybe they're out of their minds or something, you know. A lot of them was their first games, for a lot of them was their, their first big games. I don't think they're, we're going to see a performance that bad again, but who knows. And that's why I'm asking for the secondary. Please, 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 better communication. There was definitely miscommunication last week between the safeties and the cornerbacks. And um, just, you know, a little bit more of some sticky coverage. I want to see a bit more man plays, man-on-man uh, -man versus zones. Uh, zone is really what killed us last week. And Betcher, please do not blitz as much. I know this Bills defensive line might be some type of temptation for you to blitz because, like I said, they're not good. But if you uh, blitz every other play as you did last week against the Cowboys, it becomes extremely ineffective. Just like if you pass every play instead of running the ball, it becomes extremely ineffective. And then also, if you do blitz and you find out, hey, I went in there with five or six guys, it didn't really do anything, which would be a surprise to me if it doesn't actually have an effect, then blitz a lot less because it will be basically the same as sending four guys. Okay, it's um the the one thing that's really bad for this Giants team is that even though blitzing might be the only way we, only way we could get pressure, it exposes our extremely young and extremely green secondary. So those are my keys guys against the Buffalo Bills, the keys to success, run the ball more, have more diversity in your play calling, Shermer, get some inside pressure, BJ Hill and Dexter Lawrence, specifically talking to you guys, because you can do it, and I've seen both of you do it. Secondary, please stay to your man a little bit more, and Betcher, call some more man plays and less blitz plays. I don't know, what is that, like five keys to success? Let me count it off again. Run, diversity, inside pressure, sticky coverage, less blitzes. Yeah, five keys to success, man. Five keys to success against the Buffalo Bills. And this is not a team that we should sleep on. I said, in my opinion, this is a really underrated team out of the AFC that could possibly snag a wild card spot. They have a really good defense. Top 10 in the league. Last year was top five in the league, right? They have a really good defense. We should not be sleeping on them. They have a young up-and-coming quarterback, and their honestly, their deficiencies are on that um, on that offensive side with the offensive line. And you could argue their receiving core too, but they got some. They got a former Giants killer in there that knows how to kill us, Cole Beasley. Watch out for him. If we lose this game, it's gonna be because a we didn't run the ball, and two because Cole, Be Cole Beasley killed us out of the slot. If we lose this game, and it's, there's a good chance we lose it, but we shouldn't. We're we're better than the Buffalo Bills, all right? And and I'm not saying as an overall team, but this is an offensive league. We could put up more points than the Bills can. That's what I got for you all today. Let me know what you all think. Do you agree with my keys to success? Uh, do you agree with the fact that we need to run the ball more, that we need to look out for Cole Beasley, all that? Put your comments down below. Please, I love to talk with my subscribers. I love to respond, you know, get a little conversation going and whatnot. But like, share, comment, please subscribe, help your boy out. I'm out. You're... Alright guys, thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. You're...